In this Quranic story, you will learn one very important thing. That is, it is not about making a mistake. It is about the action you do after making a mistake. In the Quranic chapter Araf, the Lord has mentioned about the creation of a human being. To tell us how we are made. Unfortunately, the so-called educated people in the universities deny that the God has created Adam from a mud and then told the angels to prostrate him. They say that it is not scientifically proven. It is so foolish to associate something with science when it is not the sphere of activity of science. It is just like asking a religious scholar that, what does the Islam say about the vaccine of coronavirus? Or it is like asking aircraft pilot, should we have a painkiller in a high fever? What does the Islam say about it? Vaccine of coronavirus is not a field of Islamic scholar. However, if the vaccine contains something which is prohibited in Islam, then it will be a field of Islamic scholar. But if it does not contain anything which is prohibited in Islam, then to get vaccinated or not would be asked from a doctor, as it is their field. To determine whether the ingredients in the vaccine are permissible by Islam or not. It is not the field of the doctors. Doctors will only tell about the ingredients inside the vaccine, then the Islamic scholars will determine whether they are permissible in Islam or not. Not everything is a field of science. What happened in the history is not the field of science. It is a field of historians. In the Battle of Karbala, Hussein was killed or not. Newton and Charles Darwin will not tell you that. The historians will tell you. When Prophet Adam was being created, was there any historian at that time? To tell us how he was created and then what happened next. Of course there was no historian at that time. This is why the Lord Almighty tells us how he was created. Because the Adam was the first human being in the world, that is why the God directly tells us how he was created, and then what happened to him after that. Now, claiming that the creation of Adam is not scientifically proven is completely senseless. The God tells us the story of the Adam saying in the Quran, We have created you, and we have created you from a mud. Then we commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam. The God gave us honor before sending to the earth. And the people who do not believe in Adam and claim that we were monkeys previously are actually disrespecting us. They claim that the human creation was an accident. If that is the case, then the human beings are not worth admiring. The God is telling us that the human beings were sent to the earth with an extraordinary arrangements. All the other creations prostrated Adam. But the Satan did not. The God asked him, Why you did not prostrate to Adam? He replied, I am better than him. You have made me with a fire, and you have made him from a mud. The fire can never prostrate to a mud. The God said, Get lost from here. You have no right to disobey my command. From today onwards, you are disregarded in our eyes. Instead of repenting, the Satan said, O oh my Lord, give me life till the end of time. The God replied, I will not send death to you before the end of time. Do whatever you can do. Satan said, O oh my Lord, you have misguided me because of this Adam. Whenever Adam will go on the straight path, I will be a barrier. I will make him go stray. This is called envy and jealousy blaming other people for your own mistakes. Satan envied Adam and started to challenge the God. He said, O Lord, I will attack him from the front, from the back, from the right and from the left. And you will see most of them being unthankful to you. I do not guarantee hundred percent people, but I will lead most of them in hell fire. Look how he was challenging the God. He did not say that I will try to mislead the people. He was telling the result. This attitude is just like someone told you. There is a terrorist you need to fight with. One way of replying would be, I will the not second leave way him. of replying would be, Do not worry. Tomorrow you will see in the newspaper that the terrorist is dead. I got this. Meaning, consider it done. 
This is a way of giving someone a big threat. The Satan did not say that, my lord, I will mislead everyone. He said, I am giving you the news that you will see most of the people unthankful to you. Quran says, the claim that Satan made, he found himself being truthful in it. Satan has made majority of the people the fuel of hell fire. When the Satan said these things, then the God said to him, Get lost from here in abjection and disgrace. I will allow you to do whatever you want, but remember one thing. Whoever will follow you, I will throw them in the hell fire along with you and fill it up. I will also not show stinginess in filling up the hell fire. But for sure I will tell people that you are after them. Then the God conversed with Adam. O oh Adam, you and your wife, both of you go and live your life in heaven. I am telling both of you that I have made the whole heaven for you two to enjoy, and eat wherever you want to eat from. However, I am prohibiting you to go to that tree. Eating its fruit is far away, do not even go near to it. Otherwise both of you will be amongst the tyrants. The Satan immediately started to mislead Adam and his wife. At least he should have left the first human being. He should have thought that, today I will take a rest, as I have freshly challenged the God. From tomorrow onwards I will get onto it. Visionary people do not take a rest. Regardless of the vision is a good one or a bad one. This is what we can learn from the action of the Satan and he did succeed in his vision. The Quran says majority of the people will go in the hellfire. Whatever the Satan challenged the God with, he did it. But the fool missed out one thing, that he himself is also going in the hellfire. That was stupidity of the Satan. He thought, if I am going to the hellfire, then I will take these people with myself. And going to the hellfire is my success. So the Satan immediately started to mislead Adam and his wife, saying, Why did they go to the heaven? The Quran says he started to give bad thoughts in the hearts of both of them. He gave the thoughts in their hearts that, Why the God has allowed everything in the heaven, but prohibited us from going near to this tree. This means there is something special about it. It is a human nature. Whenever you will stop them from doing something, they will do that for sure. Do the experiment yourself and you will know it. Place a cabinet in your house with numerous drawers. Leave all the drawers open, except for one. Then tell your children that they can open all the drawers, except the locked one. They will not try to open any drawer other than which is locked. They will be curious to know what is inside the locked drawer. This happens because the Satan gives the thoughts in the heart and makes a person disobey. The Satan gave the thoughts in the heart of the Adam and his wife. They got curious and said, There is definitely something with this tree. That is why the Lord has stopped us to go near to it. The Satan said, The God wants you to have the heaven but temporarily. Because the death is there, so for sure we will die. It seems like this tree contains something which makes a person immortal. So this tree is basically a shield against the death. The moment we will eat from this tree, we will be like angels. Angels live for thousands of years. So that is the reason that God has forbidden us to go near to this tree. The Quran says Satan kept on giving these kinds of thoughts in their hearts again and again. All the scholars agree that the prophets could not commit intentional sins. The However, scholars they can make an unintentional and his mistakes. wife thought that the God has forbidden this particular tree. But the same kind of trees were grown on the other places too. We can eat from the other trees of same kind. Because the God said this tree. What the God meant was, this kind of tree is prohibited no matter where it is grown in the whole heaven. Prophet Adam and his wife misunderstood the God's command and said, The God prohibited this particular tree not the other one of same kind. And the Satan was continuously giving them the thoughts in their hearts to eat from the tree. The Quran says eating the fruit from that kind of tree was far away. They just touched the fruit on their tongues and tasted it. Immediately the first punishment from God came. 
and the garments of the heaven were taken away from both of them. Both of them were undressed. Out of modesty, they started to cover themselves with the leaves of the trees. Though both of them were husband and wife, and it is permissible to be undressed in front of your wife or husband. This proves that under the normal circumstances, even the husband and wife should not walk around in front of each other undressed. Just imagine in the eyes of God, how immodest that woman will be who is not even a wife of a person but walks around him in a short dress, under the normal circumstances. Meaning the Quran says, even the wife should be in a modest dress in front of a husband, under the normal circumstances. Though the veil is not required in front of your husband, but this is to maintain the modesty. The men and women who walks around in front of other men and women which are not husbands or wives, they have left the tradition of their father and mother, Adam and Eve. They are going against the human nature, Adam and Eve. The nature demands that under the normal circumstances, the husband and wife should show modesty to each other and be on the nature of Adam and his wife. The Quran says, Immediately the God asked Adam and his wife, Did I not tell both of you not to eat from that tree? Did I not warn you that the Satan is your enemy? This shows that the Lord Almighty already informed Adam and his wife about the disobedience of Satan. And he will mislead both of you. Please, note one very important point at this stage. When the God asked Satan why you did not prostrate, he started to give logics. I am better than him. But Adam did not give any logics. Adam did not say, Oh my Lord, I just came to heaven and I thought you meant that specific tree. So I did not eat from that tree, I just tasted from the other tree similar to the one you prohibited. On the top of that, I just tasted it as you did not even give a chance to eat it properly. Just like children. When they make a mistake, they start to make excuses. And when you have allowed everything in heaven, then prohibiting only one type of tree is illogical. I just do not understand why would you do that. Okay. Next time I will not eat it, but it is beyond my understanding. Unfortunately, this is exactly what is happening nowadays. The Islamic law tells the women to cover themselves up. The women say, actually covering ourselves is not important. The men should lower down their gazes and be modest. This claim can only come from a person who does not have fear of God in their hearts, just like the Satan did not have a fear of the God. The prophet ordered, grow the beard. The men says no. Actually this was a culture of stone age. Actually, there is no Islam in beard only. In reality, the person should have good character, high ethics, and should not break anyone's heart. Oh man, growing beard is obligatory. The God called Prophet Moses on the Mount of Tur and told him to command the Jews to grow the beard. Do not shave it off. The Prophet Muhammad narrated in Bukhari, Oppose Jews and Christians. Grow the beard. All the prophets grew a beard. But look at our people nowadays. Actually this, actually that. Actually the beard should be inside, in the form of modesty. Oh man! It should be grown outside properly, right on the face. If you cannot grow it for some reason, then at least, repent to the God. Ask the God to help you grow it, but do not try to change the command of the Lord Almighty. The same thing is happening in almost all the commands of the God. Finding logics in every command and then changing it for their own convenience. When the prophet Ibrahim was commanded by the Lord to sacrifice his son, he did not say, how about I give food to thousand poor people instead? As slaughtering a son is weird and feeding poor is a good deed. If he would have changed the command of God due to logics, then he would never have gotten the title of the friend of God. This is a work of Satan to change the command of the God and do something else. If the God would have told the Satan, Okay, if you are not prostrating then, pledge to pray 2,000 units of prayers. The Satan would have immediately pledged. 
The god could have said to him, Okay then, feed the poor ghosts. Because he is a ghost himself, so he would have fed millions of ghosts, as he was very pious. He said, I agree to obey any command, but prostrating to Adam does not make any logic. Adam is just created, where I have been praying for thousands of years. I am definitely higher in honor. Should I prostrate to Adam? No way. Basically, he thinks he can teach the God of what to do and what not to do. Nowadays believers object that why did the God give half portion to the women in inheritance and full to the men? This means you are trying to advise the Lord Almighty that why did he make a law that a woman will get half portion in inheritance and men will get full portion? The scholars tells the women that the man is a leader of the house, and hence, you need to obey him. The women response, why? They immediately say, why, what is in the men which is not in the women? Being a leader does not mean that he should make a house like a prison and not allow you to go anywhere. But to take your husband into confidence is a moral act. At least inform him where you are going to. The women say, men and women are equal. Why should we inform him before leaving the house, when they do not inform us? Please, note that a man is not bound to inform a wife before leaving the house, by the rule made by the God. However, ethically they should also inform the wife. The thing is, the God did not make women equal to the men. The God says, I have given a higher level to men over women. A wise woman will accept this law of the God and say, O oh my Lord, if you have made my husband a leader, then I am satisfied by your command, even if I do not understand the logic behind it. Just because of your command, I will respect him, obey him and love him. A wise woman would do that. Why? just to please the God. She would know that he will die one day, and the God will reward me for being obedient to him. Now, the God has commanded the husband to bear all the expenses of the house. But, nowadays husbands are telling the wives to share the burden of expenses of the house, as times have changed, and if we are to survive then both of us will have to do the job. Please, note that, these are just lame excuses. When the Lord has commanded the husband to bear all the expenses of the house, regardless of economic crisis or not, then do not try to advise the God of what to do. Unfortunately, we are all following the Satan, intentionally or unintentionally, finding logics in all of the God's command and rules, and sometimes change them to our convenience. The Satan said to the God, I do not understand the logic behind prostrating Adam. And the God said to Adam, I told you not to eat from that tree. Adam did not make excuses. Actually, I got confused about the trees. I thought you meant this specific tree. He immediately admitted his mistake. He and his wife repented and said, O oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be amongst the losers. The God loved this action and words of Adam and his wife so much that he blessed them with three things. He returned his same honor which he had before making a mistake. For example, if the president is removed from his post, but then again given back the same position. Number two, he forgave their mistake. Lastly, he protected them from making these kind of mistakes in future and follow his guidance with ease. This is a sign of a true repentance that the God protects a person from committing any sins. He said, I have made you sin proof. I loved your repentance so much that even if the Satan will try to mislead you, I will be a barrier for him. So, we learn from this part that no matter how many times you make a mistake, do not forget to repent to the God immediately. The God said to Adam, I have accepted your repentance, however, you will be living on earth for some time. I have showed you the heaven, but I made you to live on earth. You will have children and their generations will grow. You need to announce to them that if they want to enter the paradise, 
then they will have to avoid committing sins and repent to me if they do. I have showed you the heaven for free, but from now on, whoever will work hard to enter it will get to see it. But the person who will not work for it will not get to see it. The God addresses us in the Quran, O children of Adam. Be aware of Satan, lest he will misguide you and make you go stray, so you will lose the heaven. The same way he misguided Adam and his wife, and they had to leave the heaven. The God is warning us about the Satan, that he started to mislead Adam and his wife as soon as they entered the heaven. Be aware. He comes after you too, as soon as you reach the age where you start to understand my commands. The Satan and his companions are watching you the way you can never see them. In this verse there is an answer for the people who say, Where is the Satan? We do not see it. The God said, He can see you, but you cannot see him. It is a reality. Science cannot trace everything. Satan is not a materialistic being. Science can only trace the materialistic things. Microscopic or gigantic. The God has created many things which we cannot see. Our labs cannot trace them. So, the God said, The way the Satan and his companions are watching you, you cannot see them the same way. In another verse the God said, We have made the Satan a friend of those people, who have weak faith in the hereafter. If the faith in the heaven and hereafter would be strong, then the strike from the Satan can be dodged. This proves that, in order to save us from the misguidance of the Satan, we should talk and think more about the death, heaven and thereafter. That the day will come, when we will have to answer to the Lord Almighty. In the Quranic chapter Al-Araf, the God says, The people who have forgotten the day of judgment, we will forget them the same way, they have forgotten meeting with us. We will throw them in the hellfire, and we will forget them. Therefore, please, Remind your family members, your friends, your neighbors and all of your contacts of the Day of Judgment. The God will call the prophets in his court. Where do you and I stand? So, if you will talk about the last day, that will motivate you to do good deeds, and also will take the tension away from you. For example, if someone is not returning your money, the Lord will compensate you at the Day of Judgment by taking the good deeds of that person and giving it to you. The God says, Whatever the tyrants are doing, do not think that the God is unaware of it. The God is giving them the time till the day, when the eyes will be open wide. The people usually ask the God that why you do not punish them immediately? He says, I have ordained a time of meeting with them. I am patient, I am not impulsive. The God is all-wise. If he will start to punish every sinner immediately, then the system of rewarding and questioning will not be there anymore. Everyone will obey then. What do you think? If someone will steal something and the ceiling would fall on him immediately, as a punishment from God, the people will become angels. Because they will know, if they commit a sin, then the God will punish them immediately. No. The Quran says that we have ordained a day, to recompense everyone. May the Lord Almighty protect us from Satan and forgive all the sins that we have committed till this day and onwards. Amen.